morning guys and girls, I don't know how it's out there, Martin Miller here, hope you're getting well. I mean, Zagreb, Croatia, I have to say Croatian, Hrvatska. Yes, starts with the HR. You gotta overroll your eyes when you speak Croatian, but the funny thing is, Croatian and Serbian language are quite similar. So today I'm going to the border town of Jesenovac, where a horrible concentration camp was held. And a lot of people said that the crimes committed at this camp were worse than Auschwitz. I don't like to compare concentration camps with the Third Reich, but this was this was run by the puppet state of Croatia, as they were separate from Yugoslavia, and so many thousands of Serbs, Romas, and Jews were murdered here. So. This is going to be my third concentration camp that I've visited within former Yugoslavia. I've seen two within Serbia, and let's not forget that I have been to Auschwitz before. So let's go. Now I've got my train ticket for about 8 euros. But the one thing I'm a bit concerned is that I'm not too sure if the train really goes to where I want to go in uh, Jesinovic, you know, the camp is. Because like literally, it just says on the border of trains here. But then Google Maps is telling me like a different story, saying the train goes straightly to the memorial site in walking distance. So it leaves at like 6, 33 in the morning, then there's another train like 11 o'clock. So if I were you, with the first train in the morning, seriously. Because, uh, I reckon, if you get there at 8.30, you'd have at least a few hours to look around the campsite. Maybe you use your passport to cross over the other side of the border and see the memorial on the Bosnian side. And then, see if you can get the train back to Zagreb, like before lunchtime. Or if you're un unlucky, the last train of the day. Like, I really don't want to stay overnight in this part of Croatia because, well, I have to get to Pula tomorrow as my train leaves. I mean, no, sorry, my, my bus is going to leave to Pula tomorrow, and I've got to fly to Pula the next day. This is my third time in Croatia. I first came to Zagreb from a Swiss bus that left Zurich and took all overnight to get to Zagreb. This was in August 2015, when I first moved to the UK. I didn't come back to Croatia until June 2018 when I had a nervous breakdown in London and I quit my job because of all these dumb shits they were hiring. And so, last time I was in Croatia, I just took around the Adriatic coast. I just went to Pula and split before pulling into Bosnia. Uh, this trip, I'm basically just going Zagreb, Jasenovic, and then back to Pula. Unfortunately, the flights back to the UK from like Bosnia weren't so cheap but from Pula and Split they were at least 10 or 20 quid and I basically have to get back to the UK as soon as possible because if I get back to work I've got to work hard if I want to go abroad and get to my 100 nation but you see to me going to Europe nowadays now that I've been to every country in Europe it's just so dull it's dull because I've already been to all these countries it's not that exciting I would have preferred if I went to Iraqi Kurdistan on this trip or if I went to Jordan instead of having to book a trip to Israel then last minute just can it out because you're like fuck what about if, if they if they uh, kick me out of the country so anyway I've always loved coming to the Balkans it's always been a nice place so uh, for those playing at home I spent almost a whole month in Serbia during the second lockdown and, and then I also came the trip to Turkey because of politics like a couple of years ago so this is a no-brainer for me Alright, I've been on the train for almost an hour Just heading out to the Croatian countryside <laughs> Editing my next vlog about my trip to Varna and I should be getting into this little town Jasenovac, and take 30. 
There's only a few trains here a day, so we best get the first one. Pulling into another station along the way. Another 40 minutes to uh, ja Jasnovak, which is like last stop. I'm hoping that this train doesn't terminate before Jasnovak. I really don't want to pay taxis to get to the memorial site, but if that's the case, I'll walk. If it's raining, I'll just pay for the taxis. Okay, so there's no trains going to Jatinovac. Had to get off at Sunja. So, I don't understand like why they're not running. Google Maps didn't tell me anything about track work or anything. So it just seems like I have to get a bus to the very end of the line at uh, Jatinovac. Closing on Janus Jan Sen Hovak. Yeah. So blue dot is right here. The border of Hungary and Bosnia is right over there. Only a few miles or so away. Well actually sorry, kilometers. I need to say kilometers because from a country it uses kilometers. Even though I live in a country that uses miles. Hmm. Driving near the, I believe it's the Sapa River that runs through Croatia. And we're almost there to Jasenovac. Just a few minutes away. I've been dropped off outside the train station, as you can see, train tracks. I believe the station might be down there. A bit unfortunate that the trains aren't going properly here. They didn't really explain it on the website or anything. They supposed to say the trains will go to Yasinovic via this st stop. So, uh, I mean, I'm sure that there are like auto bus stations that can get me back to Zagreb or something that can get me into Bosnia, even though I don't really want to go into Bosnia because my trip home is through Pula. Uh, And yes, it is raining. Didn't really plan for this. Didn't even bring an umbrella with me. Didn't even bring a punch drive with me from Britain. How ridiculous am I? But this is what you do. Because the weather is always going to be unpredictable. Even in summer, even in winter, even in spring, even in fall. And we're still in spring right now. But it still feels cold. It's still going to feel cold until maybe at least May. I'm walking down this road and it's mostly farmland. So according to maps I have to turn left here and then it's a big road that leads to the memorial. There's a huge, beautiful, tall memorial living in the grounds of the concentration camp. I'm sure they'll ask me a couple of euros to get in. I'm happy to pay that. I mean, why should you go to a horrible place like Auschwitz and not pay a cent to get in? You pay to keep this place 
like it's upkeepings. But you look over here, bullet holes from the recent war. I think can't always be World War Two, I believe, and I'd have to be the war from what thirty years ago. I used to work with a Croatian guy in Sydney, Australia. His name was Alan, Alan Metallic. He's a nice person to work with, even though he was a really dirty chef. He told me that his grandmother's house in Croatia had bullet holes from World War I, World War II, and the recent war. And as a matter of fact, he actually was in Croatia during the War of Independence in the 90s. But it was quite an okay place to be. But then other parts were terribly hit. Okay, as you can tell, I have my kipper on. The kipper I bought in Stanford Hill in London when I first moved to the British capital in June 2017. This kipper has traveled to the world with me. I've been to a couple of synagogues with it, been to many Jewish cemeteries. But today, as a man of Ashkenazi Jewish descent, I am going to visit a horrific place where many of my type of people were murdered. I'm not, like, I'm not really that Jewish, to be honest, afraid. Like, I don't practice the religion, I was never you know, circumcised, but I am descended of Ashkenazi, like migrants who left, what, Germany and Holland, moved to the United Kingdom, and then switched to Christianity. It's always good to know where you come from. It would be good if I would convert to Judaism, but it's a painstaking process. It's better to have known where you came from, and then rather than, than trying to claim something that you're not. I mean, a lot of people say that I'm not really that British, because I wasn't born in the United Kingdom. People always say, you have to be born in a certain country to be like that ethnic group. Well, I mean, that's not really true. I mean, if you're born in the United Kingdom, and your parents were permanent residents, I guess that does make you British, I guess. I mean, if you're born in America, and your parents were migrants, you're actually an American. I figure. These are the train tracks where victims were transported all from Yugoslavia, all parts, to this one concentration camp. But let's also be rememberful that there was a concentration camp in Nice and in Belgrade, and there are also many other concentration camps that were located in the puppet state of Croatia. Now, we go through this door for the Memorial Museum, which is in center management, and then this way is to the Flower Monument and the Memorial Train. I know on the other side of the border, in Bosnia, there's a memorial that basically explains the numbers of Jews, Romas, and Serbs who were killed in this campsite. I don't know if I'd be able to walk all the way there, but I mean, I've got all day, it's not nine o'clock yet. I can do this. So when you first come here, you see a sign about the exhibition, Exhumation of Remains of Victims of the Istasia Camp in Stara Gradska. So. So they were doing research after the World War II had ended, and then also in 64. So, map the area of the Estasia camp in just and they including the execution grounds and camp farmlands. So, I think. This is all Bosnia, that's all Croatia, um, Central Yasinovic. So, far as I'm aware, there were execution grounds on the Bosnian side of the border. Yeah.
This is mostly in Croatian, but it basically just explains, you know, timeline of what happened before the war, during the war. I've got a iron chain mural dedicated to the victims of fascism in Jasenovac. Like chains, tying on pieces of wood. Very, very symbolic here. Remember that? That's the flower memorial. That's the one that stands about. I'm not too sure if the memorial site is open. But. Okay, so the museum is open, and up here you see the names of all the Serbs and Jews and Romans who were murdered here. And I have different segments. This explains the death camp, what happened here with no verdict, since they did not fit into the proclaimed Ustasha concept of our racial and national purity. Croats and Bosnian Muslims were killed because they belonged to either the anti-fast resistant or the regime considered them to be a threat for some other reasons. The peak of the crime was the murder of more than 18,000 children, young men 14 held in the camp. That's, so that's when Croatia was declared independent during World War II as it was a puppet state of the Third Reich. Okay, so table of victims by ethnicity and gender. Serbs, 20, a total of 46,000 murdered. Roma, 16,000. Jewish, 12,000. Croat, 4,000. Bosnian and Herzegovina Muslims, over 1,000. Slovenes, Czechs, Slovaks, Ukraine, Montenegro, Italian, Russian, Rutheranian, that's like somewhere between the Ukraine and area, German, Polish, Albanian, Austrian, Georgian. Wow, look, look at that. Georgian, one kill from German. Romanian, unknown. So this is the map of the puppet state of Croatia during World War II. As you can see, it consists of mostly Croatia and Bosnia and Dubrovnik, yes. It doesn't include Montenegro or even bits of Serbia. And, and oh, by the way, it does. Because I mean, look, that's Navy Sads up in the north. As a matter of fact, Navy Sads actually occupied by the Hungarians during World War II. And the Serbs actually did cry to create their own puppet state that was, um, it was backed by the Third Reich. And then you. The map of Europe during. World War II. Um, matter of fact, Yugoslavia was neutral, and then they were invaded. I mean, look, like, like neutral, neutral. That was Iceland, part of Denmark, but you know what happened to them? They got occupied by the Allies. This is the identification of a woman who was imprisoned here, and these are all people who. Uh, they were either jailed here or actually survived. And some of these people jailed here were also communists. I've oh, got no book with songs sung in Star Sect camp. Prison chains, notes.
Okay, so resistance to the camps and the breakouts by inmates on the 22nd of April. Even the Allies bombed this camp and the Croats tried to cover up the crimes they committed by hiding the traces, demolishing the main buildings and killing the surviving inmates. The last group of women were killed in the evening of the 21st of April. About 600 of the 1,073 remaining man prisoners would decide to break out of the camp on the 22nd of April. Breakout was survived by only 107 prisoners. Only a few hours later, a breakout began of inmates from Korza, the work detained locally in the village of Dasanovic. Of 176 of them, only 11 survived. Orthodox population from Mount Kozari being taken by the Ustasha to the camp in summer of 1942. People explaining their life is like. Let me squeeze through. Yeah. Glass is a frame of pie glass bones that you use magic in this. Yan, Yan Yik. At that time, I was saying it right. The way the Serbian Croatian writing script is quite unique. I mean, this is in Latin, so there are always going to be like dashes above the S and the C, even, even the Z. Like, like when you pronounce a J, it like spells like a Y. But when you look at Serbian Cyrillic, it's all similar to Russian Cyrillic. It's the way you pronounce it. Uh, roof tile made in the camp at work, just an Ovik within Grave Woods, Zivanovic, and Delok from Jakovo, 1943. Enter on his first official visit to Hitler. The residence in Austria on the 7th of June 1941. Hitler gave full support of the policy of genocide against the Serbian population. He was born in Bosnia, the founder leader of the Islamic movement from 1945. He was the leader of the independent state of Croatia after the war. He immigrated to Italy, to Argentina, and to Spain. He died in June 1959. Yes, a lot of war criminals ended up in Argentina after the war and so many Croatians just to escape the crimes against humanity. Okay, so I just left the museum back there. I'm gonna go across here to visit the flower memorial. Find the path of the see more of the campgrounds. And over the river right there, that's Bosnia. That's another part of the camp where horrible crimes against humanity happened over there. So, following the footpath that goes along the train line, 
we see a train carriage where deportees were taken all the way from Yugoslavia to this little town in Monday, Croatia. And there's the memorial that stands out. There's a similar memorial that looks like that in Belgrade, but it's in the shape of a menorah, just to commemorate those Serbian Jews who died in the Holocaust. Places like this that does make you sad and depressed. No happy feelings here. And it's quite important that when you do visit these sites, that you do pay a lot of somberly respect, quietness. Don't be taking stupid photographs, smiling outside the gates of Auschwitz. That is just so poor taste. Show some respect and have some dignity to the horrible crimes of humanity that have happened. Depending on how old you are, you might have been a child when World War II had happened and you're about 80 years old right now. A lot of people still have the numbers written on their arms. Most survivors today. Like, if you were born in the site, between 1941 to 1945, you must be at least 80 right now, or going on to 80 before the end of 2025. But one day, there won't be any more survivors left. And that's a sad reality, but that's also a part of life, when generations die out and disappear. You tell people, never forget, always remember. train carriages that survived the war that are here to remember what people went through. Imagine being locked in one of these for the many days. You're traveling through Yugoslavia and got no idea where you're going to end up and then you end up here. A horrible concentration camp run by the fascists and if you survive you live on, but if you die, you die. Now, I don't want to get like too political and all, but I have seen some people who are Croatian, who they still use symbols that was used by the independent state of Croatia in 1945 just to stir hate and i mean those symbols really need to be outlawed but then again i've seen those types of symbols on graves of croats in all, all over the world there's the basic symbol i say hey i was a member of the far right i did horrible crimes in yugoslavia i escaped remember me and i'm like no you're a mass murderer being, you know, Croatian, or Italian, or German doesn't mean you are a fascist. Doesn't mean you are responsible for the deaths of millions of people. It just means the people who did these crimes, they're not truly German or Italian. They're not nice people. But then again, the horrible factor in the 21st century is that neo-Nazism is growing and it's horrible. And the Jewish population of all through Eastern Europe has gone down, lowered. Mass immigration to the state of Israel, to the Western world, to better places. Anti-Semitism is still a thing to this very day. We need to end it. It's a duck pond memorial here. People like their flowers. So people leave their flowers and light candles. And these are all like campgrounds where people have lived. 
I like to believe that there are people buried in this area or buried on the other side of the border. But for now, we're gonna focus on the memorial flower. This is what I got up early today. This is why I left the Zagreb. If I didn't come here today and I left Croatia a couple of days ago, I would be quite sad that I didn't do this. I mean, sure, I'm not, I'm not gonna see all of Croatia in one trip, but as long as I see the most important things that matter to me. We are here into the memorial flower right there to remember the three groups of people who were killed here Jews, Serbs, Romans, and let's not forget anti fascists and people who stood up against the fascist regime, against the independent state of Croatia. This is so awe inspiring to be here. You have flowers laid from people from Serbia, and Serbian flowers and Croatian flowers, and, and this is just really such a sad place to visit. And I'm so happy that I've came here today rather than to stay in Zagreb. Well, um, I. Hmm. And what a great way to, you know, save a candle, but like that's a flashing one, that's battery operated. May it get lost for like, weeks on end. And it's nice to see, you know, a Croatian candle there. And just usual memorial candles to remember those who died. <sighs> so we just made it across the border to Donia Grania. Thanks to Luffy. So a friend of mine I just met at the memorial site. And so this is a big memorial complex. Because as what we saw in Yasinovic earlier today, this is also where genocide happened. Too. So I've driven across that bridge over there with my Serbian Swedish friend. It's across the border and we've got to this tree. Make sure I get my passport out. So uh, this is a so can you tell me, um, what is this explaining here, explaining like what had happened? Uh, it says that, uh, uh, wait, um, Like uh, this is uh, the, a tree mm -hmm. which was used uh, to hang people. To hang people. Yeah, in Jasenovac. Mm. And then uh, it says that in 1978, uh, the tree uh, fell, fell out of old age. <laughs> and then they put it like this as mm -hmm. a memorial. So it's covered uh, uh, on the top. So it's not rainy. Mm. It's, uh, it's not on the ground, so it's dry. Okay. And uh, I see that there is no, how do you call that? Uh, the oil for the tree. Oil, uh, like like the blood of a, the tree. Like some, no, some no, no, I mean like- Like uh, sap. No, not the sap. Oh, I, I mean uh, the way you treat the wood for, uh, like you see those uh, uh, wooden planks up mm. there, they are treated. Oh yes, oh, you're treated like a uh, varnish. Yeah, varnish. Oh, varnish. oh yes. But you see, this is not varnished. Mm. Oh. But maybe they should do it to keep it. I don't know. Oh, yeah. You kind of think it would like rot away after all this time, like. Yeah, maybe it oh. will. I always like when a river divides a country and all. But the crazy thing is because rivers change, that means the change in the borders. 